Folks, we are two days into our CES coverage and just now making our way down to the Las Vegas Convention Center. This is the central hub for the show, even though it's spread out all over the town. It's cold today. In fact, we might go ice skating at one of the ponds at a local golf course. Anyway, we are down here a day before the show officially starts to pay LG Display a visit. Word has it that they have a 3000 nit OLED panel that we gotta check out. Okay, just wrapped up in the LG display booth and I'm definitely glad I went because the 3000 nit OLED is real, but there's a little bit of a twist. I'm gonna get to that at the end of this video. So just as a reminder, LG display is a completely separate arm from LG electronics, right? They're the ones who make the display panels and they sell their panels to all kinds of different electronics companies, not just LG. Good example of that would be like the, uh, the Sony OLEDs, the A80 line, built off of LG's OLED technology, right? So when we go to visit LG Display, we're taking a look at the displays of the future, the displays that are gonna go in other companies' products. That's definitely the case here. The first thing I wanna talk about though is the OLED T or the transparent OLED technology, which we have been seeing for years at this point. It was very cool to see the different implementations that they had there, most of them sort of commercial, intended for retail outlets like you see here, or even as the window on a plane or a window on a train. Heck, you could even make the sneeze guard at a buffet. Like, the, imagine going to the Sizzler and having it tell you, this is our lobster thermidor and our steak tartare. Not that you would ever see any of that stuff at Sizzler. Anyway, it's great to see these commercial applications of transparent OLED, but it reminded me of the simple genius that is the OLED T television that LG Electronics announced here at this show. We showed that to you in an early video. We'll go ahead and throw that up right here. But the thing about transparent OLED is that it doesn't have any natural contrast, right? Because it's a transparent display. You really need that roll up black film like we saw on the OLED T in order to make it look like a TV. And even though it's a simple solution, it's a highly effective one. So even though it was really interesting to see all the commercial examples of transparent OLED technology in place, it really just reminded me of the genius of what LG Electronics had to do with it in order to make it an actual TV product. Okay, so as promised, I do wanna talk about this whole 3000 nit OLED thing. What LG Display is calling it is Meta 2.0. Interestingly, it's actually the third generation of this technology, but they're calling it Meta 2.0 for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why. It doesn't really matter. Here's the twist, you guys. If you have seen the LG 2024 TV video that we already put out that I referenced earlier, you have seen the new M series, you've seen the new G series, and you heard me talk about how those TVs had a more refined MLA panel built in that allowed them to get brighter, right? I have to be honest here, I'm a little bit embarrassed that I didn't figure this out myself and put it together before I walked into LG Display, but I have figured it out. So in the past, we've seen this happen, right? LG Display calls the technology one thing, LG Electronics calls the technology something else entirely, and that's what's happening here. Meta 2.0 is basically the latest generation of the MLA panel technology at work in LG's OLED TVs. So. In fact, this 3000 nit capable OLED that we just got shown at LG Display is already in TVs that are going out from LG Electronics. At least that is my suspicion. And I think it's a pretty well-founded one because that's how it's always worked in the past. Last year, when we talked to LG Display about its technology, they said it would go up to 2100 nits. And we saw that the LG TVs that incorporated it didn't quite get that high. And that's what we're gonna see again this year. Yes, the panel can do 3000 nits, but I don't think that LG Electronics is going to let it get that bright in its consumer televisions. And part of that has to do with protecting the TV against the risk of burn in, also prolonging the longevity of the TV. So that's what's going on. Yes, it is capable of doing 3000 nits, but will you get to have it in a TV? No, probably not all 3000 nits, but it does call into question just how bright will the G series and M series TVs from LG get this year? They wouldn't tell me exactly. They seem to kind of suggest it might be under 2600 nits. I am saying in the mid 2000s perhaps, but We'll never know until I actually get those TVs in the test lab and then measure them. We'll see how it is. But it is nice to know that I think we can expect 
an even bigger brightness boost out of the G and M series TVs than we thought before. Now, considering the fact that they basically just tweaked the MLA panel a little bit and changed the processing that boosts the brightness from the TV and achieved a rather significant boost in brightness over just one year, there is a possibility that they could do it again and come out with an even brighter OLED next year. I guess we'll find out in 2025. Let's just stick to 2024 for now though, right? Now, the other exciting thing that I learned while with LG Display is that they are actually incorporating this meta technology, or we'll just call it MLA for consumer products, into PC monitors. We saw a 34 inch, a 39 inch, and was it 45 or 49 inch? Well, we're showing it to you right now so you know. Examples of these new Meta OLED technologies or MLA OLED technologies in PC monitors, which means that we can expect OLED PC monitors in 2024 to be a whole lot brighter. The other thing that they showed us was the world's first 480 hertz OLED PC monitor. Now you can only drive the monitor up to 440 hertz at full HD resolution. If you want to use it at 4K resolution, it's going to top out at 240 hertz. And I asked them, where's the bottleneck there? And it basically comes down to processing. As you know, resolution is pretty bandwidth intensive already. You slap a high refresh rate on top of that, and it's just not possible with the processing power that's available today. And this is not true just for LG or LG display. This is true for anyone, right? The processing power does not exist to get us 480 hertz at higher resolutions right now. But it is exciting to know that 480 hertz is going to be out there and become more common in PC monitors. Also, I gotta say, they did a side-by-side -side comparison of 240 hertz versus 480 hertz, and the clarity of that was just incredible. It, it's a combination of the instant pixel response time from the OLED panel, as well as that high refresh rate. I think gamers are going to be thrilled. It's also a big reminder that the, the division between PC monitors and TVs, especially in 2024, has never been blurrier. We're seeing PC monitors that are basically TVs, and we're seeing smaller screen sizes in TVs that basically make them PC monitors with all the different features they've incorporated. That, my friends, is a completely separate video that we are definitely gonna be getting to this year. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this insightful video. If you did, slap it with a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. We have a ton of CES content coming your way. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm leaving that in. <laughs>